first Rise Mzansi Citizens Assembly. The very first one. And the first of many, because Rise Mzansi has recognized that South Africa in our constitution is a participatory democracy. What that means is we don't just go and vote every five years and then let government get on with it. We participate continually. But what we're doing with these citizens' assemblies is inviting people who are activists and leaders on particular issues, people who are experts and academics, to come and engage with the ideas that we are putting forward in our manifesto and in our thematic uh, papers. And not just to come and clap, but to come, if necessary, critique, if necessary, to make suggestions about better ways of doing things. Why are we rising up for single mums? And Makhshule will answer this, but let me just give you one statistic that I heard a few days ago. 45% of children in South Africa live with one parent. And of that 45% who live with one parent, 93% are mums. And I'm going to ask Mahashule now to talk about why that is the case, but also what Rise and Zanzi is suggesting should be done to support single mums in a thematic briefing note that I would encourage everybody to read uh, which we issued this week. Thank you, Makhashule. Over to you. Thank, thank you very much, Mark. So for those that uh, might not know me, it's Makhashule Ghana. Uh, I was raised by a single mother. Even as a child, you see the hardship that she, she went through. There's the burden of caring for, for, for your children, and providing for them. But in many instances, there's also the burden of caring for your, for your parents. You know how hard it is to be a woman in South Africa and to be a single, <laughs> a single, single mother with children. It's even it's double hard. That's why we focus on single mothers. When we get to, uh, to parliament, what we are going to fight for. Um, uh, one is the, is the tax relief. The second, uh, uh, aspect for the unemployed, unemployed single mothers or those that are earning to qualify for a child support grant. We say immediately uh, we need to uh, be able to raise the child, uh, the grant, the child grant uh, to be at least at the, at the level uh, of the or just above the poverty line uh, because currently the, 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 uh, the child support grant uh, and migrant might cover that. It's sitting below the poverty line. Uh, it's less than 550, and the poverty line is 680. The third uh, inter intervention, which uh, Tsepo will, will, will speak to, it's around the, uh, the early childhood development, uh, which uh, stops many uh, uh, you know, mothers even, even to look for a job. The, the fourth one, uh, which uh, this one is targeted at us men, uh, there are a lot of us as men who, who do not pay maintenance for our children, you know, uh, we need to, to strengthen the maintenance court. And the final, uh, the final intervention which of the five, it's uh, the, the maternity leave, uh, that we uh, uh, amending the, uh, the basic conditions of employment uh, for, um, for, for, for single mothers, you know, or for, for women who are raising children on their own to have a longer period uh, that, uh, of uh, maternity leave that will be f uh, fully paid by the employer. So those are the fee, five key uh, 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 interventions that, as Rise we are uh, uh, we are proposing to ease the burden of care on single mothers. So my name is Ntabi Singh Mgadi. I am a 35-year-old mother of two. Um, it would be beautiful to have um, a tax rebate, but I want to touch um, but, uh, touch on what Mr. Ghana had said. There's a lot of things that you didn't mention, sir. There is um, medical aid that you didn't consider. When we look at um, house subsidies, it's either you are getting too much 
to apply for um, government subsidy, or you are just, you know, you just have to go to um, buy a house, um, even if you do not afford it, but because you just want a better environment um, for you and your kids, you would move in there. Not considered um, water and um, rates and taxes, which are extremely um, high, especially if you're a single mom, having to take care of the kids, the food, and everything. So if we can get um, rebated on, um, on the things that we are paying on a monthly, on a daily actually, before we go to a weekly and the monthly, um, because also the schools, the areas we move to, um, the schools are, are sometimes either they're expensive or they, if you get um, subsidized maybe for uniform and whatnot, you are not going to be considered because you earn a certain salary. And with that salary, I'm struggling as it is. They have this thing that middle class people are not struggling. They are the most struggling people. So being the firstborn in a black community, black tax is always there. And um, it is extremely hard having to look after your family because the, they do not qualify. My mom is 57. She is unemployed. She cannot get a job now. She, cannot, she doesn't qualify for um, old people grant. So she's relying on 350. So that means that I need to make sure that I look after her. And then looking after her, it means that it is taking from the little money that I have. And when you are a black female, it also gets more difficult because um, our salaries, when we look at same person doing the same job, and it's a female, but white or Indian, our salaries are not the same. Same experience, same, um, yeah, um, same qualification and all. Because you're black, you are just getting you know, the little of the cake. So um, those are the things that um, I'm struggling from. My kids, I need to um, either fetch my mom um, fetch my mom from Soweto so that she can come look after my kids if I have to go on weekends and do extra jobs that I do on the side to make sure that um, by the month, end, by the month end, when the month ends, um, everything is covered for. So I have um, extra jobs also that I am doing, trying to make sure that my kids, are not, they're not living a comfortable life, but they're living an okay life. What this discussion is already showing is that there's a multiplicity, there's many, many issues that confront uh, single mums in a way that's harder than or, or exacerbate life. Access to transport, safety and security, access to housing, on continuing racial discrimination right. at work. A, a bunch of issues and reasons why I think we're right to draw attention to, to you and to many other people uh, who are in a similar situation to, you, to yourself. Okay. So, Michael, you've heard in Tabi. You've had a look at uh, the proposal that RISE has made around tax relief. I'm keen to hear now from you as a budget and financial you. specialist uh, what you think are the, the issues. Uh, I think it's uh, excellent that uh, RISE is attempting to mobilize single mothers behind a political platform. Um, like uh, Mahashule, I um, also am the child of a single mother, bless her soul. And so, uh, while I didn't grow up in poverty, uh, even as Ntabi Singh says, mothers who are not necessarily growing up in poverty, but nevertheless, any single mother is a superhero mm -hmm. and uh, deserves, uh, some, some, deserves something from us. Because as Ntabi Singh is studying and raising children and working, uh, she is not only making a contribution to her family, but she is making a contribution to the nation. So the child support grant uh, is currently around 530 rand a month. And uh, the proposal is to raise it to 680. So like by 150 rand or something there. And uh, I think that's quite uh, reasonable. On the PIT rebate that is being proposed, uh, I think uh, I, I want to just clarify for you uh, wh wh what the implication is. Because uh, the idea is that if you earn less than 100,000 Rand, let's say, a year, um, you, uh, which is, I think is about 8,000 Rand a month, right? so you can imagine people you know who may be earning that amount. If you earn below that, you're not eligible for a child support grant but you begin to be taxed. Mm -hmm. 
if you earn more than 100,000, that's when you start paying taxes. But our tax system is incredibly progressive. And what that means is a person who earns 100,000 rand a year only pays every year in tax about 700 rand. So the 30,000 rand tax rebate, I mean, one thing you would need to clarify, are you saying that person now would get 30,000 rand? Or are you saying you're going to discount their 700 rand tax bill and say you don't have to pay any taxes? I'm assuming it's the latter. Mm. It's only when you're in the region of 250 to 300,000 rand. Once you earn that amount of money, then you're looking at a tax bill of about 30,000 rand. So this measure uh, would benefit more the middle class uh, earning taxpayers. Michael mentioned early childhood development, so did Mahashule, which now allows us to turn on to Serpo, uh, an expert and an advocate on all issues to do with uh, chi early ECD, as we call it, uh, and an issue that is very fundamental, of course, to single mums in particular. Over to you, Serpo. Today we're here under the banner of single mothers and how we can support single mothers. And Rice's analysis is absolutely correct that there's a disproportionate burden on single mothers in caring for young children. But also more generally, there's a burden on women of color in the care economy. Because when we're looking at, East, at the ECD space also, it's mostly run by black women within um, township and rural areas, as Michael has said. And how I want to link here single mothers and early childhood development is that we have to emphasize and put our attention on the interconnectedness of mother's well-being and how that connects to the child's holistic development. Wise husbands will tell you that happy life, happy wife. Um, I could say that a happy child is a hap also is a happy mother. The context of ECD, you know, we often just speak about ECD and take for granted hope, thinking that people understand what ECD is. And some of the understanding on the ground is that ECD is just a center or a crash. But that is actually quite far from the truth. Yeah. Early learning programs or ECD centers, crashes, form part of the umbrella term that is early childhood development. When we are talking about early childhood development, we're not talking about a particular place, but we're talking about a period of time that a child is in, from inception until six years old. This is a period of time where the child is going through significant developmental um, development in their bodies. So there's the brain development where neural pathways are being connected. And a child can pick up up to three, four languages in this time because the brain is just working so hard and forming these connections. The body is developing fine motor skills, gross motor skills, all of these things are happening at an exponential rate in these first six years. So if you look at a child at, in this period of time, you have to know that right now in front of you, they are going through early childhood development. So in our understanding then in policy making, we ought to recognize that the approach to early childhood development goes beyond the center, but looks at the child's holistic development in the home, in the communities, in centers, in clinics, everywhere a child finds themselves, there ought to be support for their holistic development. I think it's now time to open up uh, for any questions from people who are with us uh, in the audience. I particularly want to hear from single mums. What about women who are not um, getting the child support grant? Our, our proposal is uh, uh, to raise the, uh, the child support grant uh, to uh, at least to the, lower, to the lowest of the poverty lines, food poverty lines. What, what we do say as Rise Mzansi uh, is that in order to combat, you know, like the, the hunger that is there in society, there needs to be some form of uh, uh, government income grants and also uh, food vouchers. Um, two things. So firstly, I know that there was a time when a lot of the questions that exist, and I speak under correction here, in townships specifically, you find that is, you know, the local friendly granny who 
doesn't necessarily have anything that she's doing, but she's great with kids, she's raised other people's children, and so her home kind of becomes a crash. What is the current capacity for training people like that who already exist in our communities to be able to, I guess, formally be recognized as people who run ECD centers? The second thing, and I will ask you to, especially the single moms in the room, fight the urge to throw a punch. What do we say to the people who, you know, have followed a specific or adhere to a specific culture or a specific faith when we propose something like a tax rebate or support for single moms and the question that they have for us is, who sent you to go have a child outside of wedlock? Oh. And why should my tax rents support somebody who did not have the presence of mind to make a sound decision about who they're having a child with? And I ask this as a single mother myself. The first point was on um, people within communities already taking care of children. You are absolutely right that these communities are raising children and that is happening. However, where um, there are more than six children at, at one place and being cared for in sort of a setting like an ECD, there requires to be um, registration of that facility. It is absolutely true that registration is a nightmare. One key opportunity where this can be immediately addressed is with um, the Children's Act and the part that speaks on early learning programs. Because in there, there's recommendations for a one-stop shop for registration of ECD centers. We, we are, we're talking about something that is urgent now. So those that are passing judgment to say, I don't want my tax supporting uh, the, the children that were born out of wedlock. The, the, the children are here, the child is here. What is our responsibility to that child now? My name is Dudu Zile. I'm a single mother of three. I'm unemployed. I do not qualify for the child support grant. I do not qualify for SRD. What my question stems from is asking a rising Zanzi to look at a procedure for people to qualify for this SASA as single parents so that they can get something on the table for their children. As much as this 530 rents in Nani, Inani, by, by, by you saying it out loud, it sounds inan. But for me, now, as a single parent, it, it, it means the world. What Duduzile was, was raising is that I think that there is a space, uh, uh, Michael, wherein we are able, because if you are employed, you earn over uh, the, the SASA upper limit, uh, then you don't qualify for SASA. But at least with us, you will qualify for this grant, uh, for the tax relief. But then when you get uh, 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 let go or you lose your, your employment, you, you get the UIF. Mm -hmm. the, there's a space to link the UIF and the SASA. Now, Umama there was talking about some things being in Nani. Mm -hmm. And I will remind you that the National School Nutrition Program, per child, per day, it's five rand. Wow. Now, you go out and try and buy a nutritious meal for five rand. Mm -hmm. I don't see why, from a needs point of view, uh, I think it would be very effective to expand that program, which has been working effectively, so that children can actually have at least two, if not three meals, nutritious meals a day at school. We must hear the questions from online. Dimpo, do we have any questions? Rise and Zanti's proposal to increase the child support grant. So the question was, what is the figure that Rise and Zanti has come to, and how did they arrive at that? What the basis that we are arguing that uh, the child support grant needs to be increased to 680 is because that is the, the food uh, poverty line. That's the lowest of the lowest. Uh, also, Lucy Mabitsela. I just want to read her out because she's coming to us all the way from Limpopo, Bloberg Municipality, she's in the rural area, 48 years old, unemployed, raising three kids, wants to know how are you going to help us as single mothers because we're not qualifying to get jobs. Please, uh, so please can we get help? I, I think that's a, a plea uh, that speaks on behalf of many uh, single mums uh, in rural areas uh, and we, we hear you. I'm going to just very, very briefly 
ask each panelist if they have anything. You've only got a few seconds. Final that you want to say, any final comment? Um, yeah, thank you so much. Um, just sincere gratitude for centralizing mothers and also children in um, Ryzen Zanzi's work. And just for everyone and anyone listening is to really be intentional about representing children. It's a, it's a great idea to do these kind of things. My only criticism is that there are not enough men in the audience and there are not enough women on the panel. Uh, but apart from that, uh, well done. <laughs> Thank you so, so much to um, Rise and Fancy uh, for considering single mothers. Th thanks very much and thanks to the uh, audience, the panelists as well, uh, for co confirming that this, this is an issue worth fighting for. Uh, th there are some uh, uh, great ideas that we have received uh, from the panelists, but also from the audience. Thanks very much. We'll take that uh, into account as we develop the, uh, our, our offer. And it is for this reason that as Rising Sons, we say that we need, uh, we need new leaders.